Father God, we praise and thank you for gathering us today. Thank you for all the blessings you continue to give us every day. We ask you to bless our speakers so that they would be able to share their knowledge and bring their expertise to the participants. Bless all the participants so that they would be able to comprehend the information from this webinar and that they may use it to make their workplaces safe and healthy. We ask for your protection and guidance for all of us and for the Filipina nation. This we ask in the mighty name of your Son, Jesus Christ. Um, to give us the opening remarks, uh, may I call on the Executive Director of the Occupational Safety and Health Center, Engineer Noel C. Pina. Okay, good morning, everyone. Thank you for being with us today via Zoom and Facebook Live. We are very grateful for your continued support in our advocacies and activities. In this fourth, in this fourth episode of the Mag-Usap Mag Tayo webinar series, we will be focusing on our discussions on globally harmonized system of classification and uh, labeling, including the material safety and data sheet of uh, chemical and also the implementing guidelines, Dole Department Order 136 series of 2014. This aims to protect workers, and properties from the risks and hazards of chemicals, especially in workplaces engaged in, in the manufacture, use, and storage of industrial chemicals in the private sector, including their supply chain. I understand the challenges that we are going through right now but we cannot compromise the safety and health of our workers as our economy gradually recovers and opens up i encourage all of you to make safety and health your top priority the pandemic should not be used as an excuse to neglect workplace safety and health and deniably the path to a meaningful re economic recovery is only possible when we give importance to the, to the welfare of our workers. I urge you to use the learnings from the today's webinar in your respective workplaces and that you continue to be our partners in furthering this worthy advocacy. I sincerely hope that this situation, our situation, will improve soon. Stay safe. Maraming salamat sa inyong oras sa pagkinig at mabuhay po tayong lahat. 
Thank you, Edi, for that uh, opening remarks. Uh, let's have a quick uh, rundown of the program for today's episode. After this, I would be uh, presenting the theme for the 17th NOSH Congress, followed by the discussion of the webinar Virtual House Rules. Then Engineer Chris Marie Pangindian will be discussing GHS and DOLE DO136-2014, followed by an open forum. So kung may mga questions po kayo, itype down nyo po sa chat box or sa Facebook comment. Then closing remarks will be given by Engineer Concepcion Santo Tomas, the OIC Deputy Executive Director of the Occupational Safety and Health Center. The theme for the 17th NOSH Congress to be held on November 23 to 25, 2021 is Building Resilient OSH System at the Enterprise Level, Best OSH Practices Amidst the Crisis. A few reminders po before we proceed with the discussion. Please turn off your microphone. For those who are with us via Zoom, please change your names to reflect the following agency or your organization you are rep you represent then the name of the participants clarifications and questions will be entertained during the open forum please send your questions via the zoom chat box or through facebook comments please don't forget to type in your name and the name of the agency or organization you represent have fun and always keep an open mind then at the end of uh, this webinar, uh, please uh, do accomplish the uh, evaluation form for you to receive your e-certificate. To proceed uh, with the discussion, let us welcome Engineer Christine Marie Pangindian, Senior Industrial Hygienist from the Environment Control Division to discuss globally harmonized system of labeling and classification of chemicals in DO 136-2014. Ma'am Chris? Yes, good morning, Cha. Wait ha, mag-share screen na ako ha. Mm -hmm. Yan, okay na, Miss Cha? Opo, okay na po. Okay na, wait, sige. Mag-start na, no? Okay na. Okay. Good morning, everyone. So I'll be discussing po the globally harmonized system of classification and labeling of chemicals known as the GHS and the DOLE Department Order 136-14 on the guidelines for the implementation of GHS in chemical safety program in the workplace. Okay. Wait, uh, wait, wait lang. Yeah. Okay. So um the outline of my discussion po. So first, I'll first discuss the brief history of the GHS, followed by what is GHS, the coverage and the uh, target group, the GHS implementation, and lastly, po, the DOLE Department Order 136-14. Okay. <clears throat> okay. So before po kasi mag, uh, before ko mas start yung ating department order, so I'll give po muna brief history on the GHS. Okay. So uh, in 1992 po in Brazil, uh, United Nations Conference on the Environment and Development or UNCED was, um, was held in 1992 in Brazil. So uh, meron po siyang, meron established na six program, program areas in chapter 19, agenda 21, uh, to strengthen the national and international efforts related to the environmentally sound management of chemicals. Okay, so ano po yung international mandate nito? So the international mandate was adopted so way back in the year 1992, so uh, by the United Nations Conference on Environment and Development. So ano po itong mandate na to? So ang mandate po nito is a globally harmonized hazard classification and compatible labeling system, including material safety data sheets and easily understandable symbols should be available if feasible by the year 2000. So 
uh, during the 1992 po, ito po yung naging mandate on GHS. So, um, meron po kasi tayo mga existing system. So, iba't ibang countries, iba-iba po yung system ng labeling nila. So, ang... Uh, Ang aim po dito is to harmonize para po makadevelop tayo ng single globally harmonized na system para po ma-address natin yung classification ng chemicals as well as the labels and the safety data sheet. Okay? So during 2002, during the World Summit on the Sustainable Development, the Philippines pledged to implement the GHS by year 2008. So ngayon po is 2021 na. So, ito po ang uh, pledge ng Pilipinas. Then, the Philippines has also agreed with the other international bodies like the Asia-Pacific Economic Cooperation or the APEC Chemical Dialogue to adapt the GHS. So, nag-agree po tayo na i-adapt po natin itong GHS na to. Okay. So, yeah. so um, ano po ba yung... Uh, Dahil po dito sa GHS, okay? So, uh, nag-ano po ang ano to, ang committee na magkaroon po ng GHS. So, sample po like this po. So, sa labels um, if the chemical uh, ang kanyang hazard classification po is warning, harmful if swallowed. So, kung titingnan po natin sa iba't ibang countries po before po ito ha, like sa Indonesia, Okay, ito po yung X, ito po yung kanilang uh, symbol. Okay, for Mexico, Japan, Korea, Russia, Thailand. So kung mapapansin po natin, iba-iba po yung symbol ng um, harmful na uh, na category. Okay. Ayan. So ito po. So sa flammability naman po, so uh, di po ba kapag ka nag ano tayo ng flammable ang isang chemical so ang nakikita natin is yung fire okay so sa Canada ito po kung makikita natin iba-iba pa rin po yung symbol ng mga um, hazard classification ng chemical so sa flammability so makikita nyo although lahat siya naka uh, fire naman pero iba-iba po meron naka background na orange uh, meron pa pong naka uh, indicate na may flammable so Kung titingnan po, iba-iba po talaga. So, let's say magpunta ka sa ibang bansa, pag nakita mo siya, makita mo lang yung flame, ah, flammable to. But with the GHS po, iha-harmonize na po. Okay. So, later po i-discuss ko yon Okay. Ito po, yung flammable. So, kung titingnan po, yan. actually po, iba-iba po. Merong naka-shade uh, na color orange, but the pictogram or the picture is color black. Okay, then yun sa baba po is the international transport. So, eto po yun ginagamit sa transport. So, saan po natin usually nakikita to? Di po ba pag uh, may nakikita tayo mga truck uh, ng mga gasoline? Okay, so makikita po natin tung mga pictograms na to. So, kung titingnan po, lahat po yan, ang ano niya po is flammable yung chemical. Okay, yan. Ito po, iba-iba rin pong um, labeling ng mga chemicals ito. Okay. So, yun nasa uh, middle po, the WHMIS. Ito po yung Workplace Hazardous Materials Information System. Ito po yun sa Canada. But, um, sa Canadian um, Hazard Classification, so, nag-ano na rin po sila sa GHS. Kasi kasama din ang Canada sa mga nag-adapt sa GHS. Then, we have yun nasa right side, upper right side po. Ito po yung sa mga transport. Okay. Then ang familiar po tayo no itong nasa baba sa middle. Okay? So yan po yung NFPA, National Fire Protection Association. So color coded po siya. Okay? Yan yung previous na ginagamit. I think ngayon po ginagamit pa rin yan. Okay? But um uh, mostly po nag-adapt na sa GHS. So eto po yung may number uh, coding, yan. Then meron po siyang uh, ibig sabihin, kapag red ang kanyang background, fire hazard, pag blue, health hazard, to stability yung yellow. So ito po yung iba't ibang um, uh, labeling or mga symbols ng mga iba't ibang chemicals or uh, depende kasi yun sa kanyang classification. Okay. Yan. Ito naman po, the safety data sheet. 
So ano tong number sa tong? Ibig sabihin po niyan, bawat country meron po siyang uh, like sa Singapore, meron pong 16 sections. Okay. So ibig sabihin sa Singapore, meron pong 16 sections yung kanyang safety data sheet. Yung bawat uh, safety data sheet ng isang chemical. So before the GHS Iba-iba po, Malaysia, 16 sections, Taiwan, 10 sections, Korea, 16 sections, China, 10 sections. So, yan po, before, depende po kung saan natin, uh, let's say, nasu, uh, sinusupply ng mga manufacturers or suppliers yung mga chemicals, pag humingi tayo ng safety data sheet. So, di ba napapansin po natin, um, hindi lahat naka-16 sections, uh, not all the safety data sheets po, naka-adapt na sa GHS. Okay, but now po, I think marami na rin. So kapag nag-purchase tayo ng chemicals, pag nagbigay sila ng safety data sheet, naka-GHS um, formatted na po siya. So kung titingnan po, katulad nito Indonesia, 17 sections. Okay, so um, for the GHS kasi meron 16 sections. So pagdating dito sa Indonesia, meron pa silang isang section. So you... I think meron pa silang dinagdag. So before, ito po yung um, sections ng mga safety data sheets sa iba't ibang country. Okay. <coughs> ano po ba yung tinatawag natin na GHS? Okay. Ha? Pag sinabi po natin GHS, uh, GHS stands for the Globally Harmonized System of classification and labeling of chemicals. Ito po ay international system para po mas standardize and ma-harmonize yung classification and labeling ng chemicals. So, um, okay. so, it is a logical and comprehensive approach for defining the health hazards, physical hazards, and environmental hazards of the chemicals. Kung ano po yung kanyang hazard. Bawat chemical po may hazard dyan. Pwedeng meron siyang um, nakakategorize siya as health hazard, uh, physical hazard, environmental hazards. Okay. Creating classification process that use available data on chemicals for comparison with the defined hazard criteria. So meron, bawat chemicals meron po yung um, hazard. Then may mga criteria po yan para ma-check natin kung saan category nakakategorize itong chemical natin. Okay. Okay. A logical and comprehensive approach for communicating the hazard, the hazard information, as well as protective measures on labels and safety data sheet. Later po, ipapakita ko kung ano ba ang nilalaman nitong mga um, GHS labels as well as the GHS safety data sheet. Okay, so nandiyan po yung mga information na hinahanap natin. Okay. Okay. Ano ba uh, ano ba yung mga benefit natin from the GHS? So the countries, international organizations, chemical producers and users of chemicals all benefit. So enhanced protection of humans and environment. Okay? Kapag po nag-adapt tayo sa GHS, ano po ba ang pinoprotektahan natin? Syempre, pinoprotect po natin yung safety and health ng mga workers as well as the environment. Okay, facilitate international trade. So kasi po may mga cases po na ang chemical natin is kinukuha natin sa ibang bansa. Okay, if ito pong mga chemicals na to is naka-adapt na sa GHS, mas madali po natin maiintindihan yung mga um, documents or yung mga safety data sheet, yung labels na ipapadala nitong mga suppliers natin from other countries. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> Reduce need for testing and evaluation. So ito po kasing chemicals. Let's say isang chemical. Okay. Uh, the mo, uh, meron tayong isang common chemical na um, ito po kasi um, example is yung mga isopropyl alcohol, ethanol. So marami pong manufacturers niyan. Okay. So kapag po um, itong uh, chemical na to, yung kanyang label, yung kanyang mga hazard classification, Okay. We can check po kasi marami na pong naglal, uh, nag, uh, naggagawa mga manufacturers. Okay. Marami na pong mga testing, evaluation, studies 
about this chemical. So we can adapt na po. And dito po sa, sa ating uh, GHS, sa Purple Book kasi, naka-harmonize na po doon yung mga hazard classification ng mga chemicals. Depende po sa chemical. Depende siya sa classification, kung flammable siya, ano yung kanyang mga dapat na present doon sa label. Okay. Assist countries and international organizations to ensure the sound management of chemicals. Okay. So, syempre po, ang importante is ma-manage natin ng tama itong mga chemicals natin para maiwasan po natin yung exposure. At the same time, maiwasan natin yung um, aksidente, injury, or mga... Um, Uh, effects na magagawa nito sa atin. The results of differences, the differences in hazards and safety data sheets, labels impact both protection and trade. Okay, so iba-iba, iba-ibang labels, iba-ibang safety data sheet. So in the area of protection, okay, users may see different label warnings or SDS on the same chemical. So eto po tama, kapag nag-check ka, meron kang isang chemical, Okay, pag hinanap mo yung kanyang um, safety data sheet, let's say gusto kong mag-search, nag-search ako ng uh, safety data sheet nitong um, isang chemical na to. Kapag nag-check ka ng maraming mga safety data sheet and label warnings, makikita mo may iba-iba sila. Okay, pag tinan mo, iba yun sa, sa isang country. Okay, so marami kang makikita na kung ano yung kanyang mga hazard classification. Okay, pero isang chemical lang yon, but marami siyang nasusulat, iba-iba. So hindi siya nakaharmonize pa. Okay. In the area of trade, the need to comply with multiple regulations is costly and time consuming. Okay, syempre po, kung iba-iba siya, merong mga chemicals na sa isang country, masyado siyang mahigpit, kailangan ng permit bago natin makuha yung chemicals. So ganun po, nagkaka-iba-iba siya. Okay. For SMEs, regulatory compliance is complex and costly. So uh, based po sa, um, sa mga manufacturers, so kapag tinignan po nila ang isang chemical, let's say nag-manufacture nag sila ng isang chemical, pag nag-check sila sa, sa uh, nag-research sila or nag-check sila ng ibang labels and safety data sheet, makikita din nila na iba din yung mga nasusulat. Okay. Okay. Why change? Different systems between countries and sometimes inconsistent requirements within a country result to confusion and works and worse accidents and injuries. So actually, nung wala po yung GHS, nagkakaroon po ng confusion. Medyo nakakalito. So meron kang flammable. Let's say tayo sa Pilipinas, alam natin ito yung... yung um, hazard classification ng isang flammable na chemical. So, flame lang siya. But in other country, makikita natin, ay, may flame siya. Bakit kaya meron siyang uh, nakashade na color orange? So, nagka nagkakaroon ng confusion. Nalilito tayo na kung flammable ba talaga itong isang chemical na to. Kasi nga, iba-iba ng hazard classification, iba-iba ng pictogram, iba-iba ng, uh, ng picture, ano ba itsura nitong mga flammable na to. Okay. Kaya merong need na i-harmonize globally. Okay. <laughs> Existing system should be globally should be harmonized in order to develop a single globally harmonized system to address classification of chemicals, labels and safety data sheet. So ano ba ang aim katulad nung uh, diniskas ko kanina? Kailangan po ma-harmonize natin. Magkaroon tayo ng isang single globally harmonized system. Okay. So, ano yung iha-harmonize natin? Okay. The labels and the safety data sheet. Okay. So, kaya po nag uh, nag ano to, nag-arrive tayo dito sa GHS uh, classification and labeling of the chemicals. Okay. Sino ba ang target group of the GHS? Sino ba ang target natin dyan? Okay. So, sino ba ang magbe-benefit dito sa GHS? Okay. We have the industrial workplaces. 
including pesticide, pesticide manufacturers and pharmaceuticals must use JHS labels and safety data sheet. So sa workplaces, bakit natin kailangan ng labels and safety data sheet? Para makita natin yung specific hazard ditong chemical na to. So saan ba natin makikita to? Doon po sa JHS labels and the safety data sheet. Okay, consumers must know GHS, uh, must know the GHS label. So yung gumagamit, kailangan uh, meron makikita natin or hihingi tayo ng kopya ng label. Pwede din po yung safety data sheet para makita po natin yung mga relevant information about doon sa chemical. Okay, sino pa po ang target natin dyan? The transport services po, katulad po ng mga drivers, unloading staff, emergency responders, yun pong mga um, connected dito sa mga transport services, kailangan po alam po nila kung ano yung mga labels, placards, and other transport documents kung saan makikita nila yung information about the chemicals. Okay. Then another po is the emergency responders. So si emergency responders, um, kailangan makita niya yung labels at safety data sheet ng chemicals. So, sino-sino po itong mga emergency responders? So, yung mga firefighters, yung atin pong mga medical personnel, mga doktor, mga nurse, kailangan po uh, makita nila yung labels and safety data sheet para mas ma-assess nila kung ano yung uh, gagawin nila um, in case of emergencies. Okay. What will the GHS cover? So, lahat po ng hazardous chemicals, covered po yan ni GHS. Um, all hazardous pure substance, dilute solutions, and mixtures. So, covered din po yan ni GHS. Hindi lang po single, uh, single chemical, yun pong mga na-dilute na solutions, yung mixtures, hindi lang po pure substances. Lahat po ng chemical covered. But, pharmaceuticals, food additives, Cosmetics and pesticide residues in food will not be covered by the GHS in terms of labeling at the point of intentional intake. Okay. So yan po, hindi po i-cover yan ni GHS. Okay. But will be covered where workers may be exposed and in transport. Let's say po si cosmetics. Okay. So um, other countries po... Um, yung kanilang mga cosmetics, naglalagay po sila ng GHS uh, labels. Okay. Pero um, hindi naman po ganun kadabi. Kasi other countries, wala. Pagdating sa mga cosmetics, wala po. But doon po sa mismong manufacturing plant, so meron, meron silang ginagamit na bulk na mga um, raw materials Okay. Itong mga raw materials na to doon sa kanilang workplace kung saan minamanufacture itong mga cosmetics na to covered po yan ni GHS. Bakit? Nandoon po siya sa loob ng workplace. So itong mga bulk na mga raw materials na to kailangan po, so pag nag-supply, let's say nakasako 25 kilograms, kailangan po yan naka-adapt kay, kay GHS yung kanyang labels and kailangan po merong safety data sheet kasi po nandoon na sa my workplace. At the same time, kapag trinansport po itong mga chemicals na to, okay, kailangan uh, covered po siya ni GHS. Kailangan meron din po siyang labels. Okay, so malinaw po ito. Uh, so hindi kasama okay, at the point of intentional intake. So hindi po yan covered ni GHS. Okay. What are the key elements of the GHS? Ano ba tong nilalaman ni GHS? Okay, we have the hazard classification criteria and the HAZCOM or the hazard communication. <clears throat> Ito pong hazard classification criteria, meron po siyang tatlong um, classification. The chemicals may be classified according to the physical, health, and environmental aspects po niya. And the hazard communication, when we talk of HAZCOM, labels and safety data sheet po yan. Okay. So yan po ang nilalaman ni GHS. Okay. Then, um, siguro po yung mga users, manufacturers, familiar po tayo dito sa Purple Book. So ito pong Purple Book na to, uh, Globally Harmonized 
System of Classification and Labeling, the GHS Purple Book, ito po yung nag-provide ng um, explanatory information on how to apply the system. So, nandito po kay GHS Purple Book, okay, kung ano po yung dapat gawin, nandiyan po yung classification ng chemicals, nandiyan po yung hazard communication, nandiyan po sa Purple Book. Okay. The United Nations publication of the GHS document. So ngayon po, nasa 8th version na po tayo. So nag-start po yan sa first version. So ngayon po, 8th version na. Okay. So ito pong purple book, it outlines the provisions in four parts. So yung unang part po is the introduction. We have the scope, definition, hazard, communication. And yun pong second part is the classification criteria for physical hazards. The third po is the health and the fourth is the environmental hazard. So dito po, uh, dito po nakapaloob itong kung ano-ano itong mga physical hazards. So nandito po yung explanation, yung testing, paano ginagawa, kung paano mo makakategorize itong chemical na to, kung category 1 ba siya, kung flammable siya. So nandito po sa purple book yan. Okay. So for now po, ang um, meron kaming copy is the 8th version kasi yan pa lang po yung latest. Okay. GHS itself is not a regulation or a standard. Okay. The, the GHS document provides regulator provides countries with the regulatory building blocks to develop or modify existing national programs. Okay. So, um, ito pong building blocks sa tinatawag. Okay. So, Um, binibigyan po ng choice ang isang country kung ano yung susundin mo na um, hazard classification. Okay. Ano pong example? Ang example po nila nito is let's say po sa um, sa EU, sa Europe, uh, sa European Union. Okay. So sila po, hindi na po nila in yung flammable liquid na category 4. But other countries po, meron pa rin silang for flammable liquids, may category 4 pa sila. Okay. So si EU, hindi na. Based sa kanilang um, uh, agreed, as agreed po sa kanilang country, hindi na po nila yon i-adapt. So tinanggal na po nila yon. Yung po yung tinatawag na building blocks. But ang sinasabi po dyan is depende po sa country kung uh, kung i- a-adapt mo pa yung category na yon Kasi kapag sabing liquid, uh, flammable liquids, category 4, medyo mababa na po yun. Unlike pag category 1, eto pong category 1 is mas hazardous to. So they drop na po, tinanggal na po nila tong category 4. Katulad po na sinasabi ko, depende po yan sa um, bawat countries. Okay. Countries adapting GHS will will take the agreed criteria and provisions and implement them through their own regulatory process and procedures. Okay, so depende po sa proseso ng bawat country. So eto po sa Pilipinas, meron naman po tayong technical working group on GHS. So uh, may uh, series of meetings po, ayan, pinag-aaralan po yan. Then may meeting po on the building blocks. Okay. Okay. Yung pong first edition ng Purple Book, adapted po siya way back December 2002 and published in 2003. Okay, so first edition po yan. Ngayon po, the latest edition, revision 8 po, nung 2019 po yan. So nilabas po yan nung 2019, revision 8. So dito po, makikita nyo po dito sa nilagay kong link, dito po download po natin itong um, uh, 8 Revision 8 ng GHS Purple Book. Okay, free naman po yan. Okay. Then, ito po kasi Purple Book is ina-update every two years. So, if the last revision po is 2019, I think this October, um, I think October po, parang may nabasa ako, uh, by October or this year po, ilalabas na rin po yung Revision 9 ng GHS Purple Book. Okay. So every two years, ina-update siya. Then bakit po siya ina-update? Kasi meron pong mga um, pagbabago na ginagawa. So meron pong mga um, dinadagdag na hazard classification or 
um, sa labeling, meron po silang dinadagdag. Uh, makikita po kasi natin sa Purple Book yung sample ng mga uh, labeling ng mga chemicals. Okay? Ayan. <clears throat> Para po mas maintindihan natin si GHS, so magbibigay po ako ng um, examples. Ito pong mga examples na to, uh, ito po yung nandoon sa Purple Book. Okay, so um, sinusunod po ito ng mga countries pwede nilang, kasi pwede nilang gawing um, guide or reference po yung mga sample GHS labels na nandoon sa Purple Book. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> Yan. So kung titingnan po natin, ito po um ito pong GHS labels, okay? Meron siyang product identifier, supplier identification, the hazard pictograms, the signal word, hazard statement, precautionary statement, and the supplemental information. So yan po yung um nilalaman uh, label elements. Yan po ang nilalaman ng isang GHS label. Okay. Uh, mamaya po i-discuss ko tong yung may pictogram na may black uh, black pictogram, white background, red diamond um, border. Okay. Another example po ng uh, GHS label. Sir, so we have this epichlorohydrine. So kung makikita po, product identifier Symbols, yung nasa left side mo ng symbols, ito po yung mga symbols na ginagamit sa GHS. The signal word po, the danger, hazard statements, precautionary statements, and the supplier identification. Another example din po ng GHS label format. Okay. Next, another example po. So same po kung mapapansin po natin, yung, um, ano to, yung content po ng mga labels sa mga uh, previous na pinakitong picture is nandito rin po sa um, present na picture. So, ibig sabihin po, yung product identifier, hazard pictogram, signal word, hazard statement, supplemental info, precautionary sa statement, supplier identification, yan po ang nilalaman ng isang um, GHS formatted label. Okay. Yan. So, ito po, Kung makikita nyo po, uh, yung nasa loob po ng box, ito po yung container niya. Okay. So, itong container mo ng chemical, 2-methyl flammaline. Okay. So, sa kanyang um, container, kailangan po meron kang GHS label. Okay. So, since, um, anong tawag dito, i-transport na siya or i-deliver na, okay, so ilalagay mo sa box. So, ang sinasabi po ni GHS, pag pinasok mo na siya, siya sa box, yung mismong container mo is meron siyang label. But, yun pong iyong um, box, kailangan po meron din po siyang label. Since itra-transport mo itong chemical na to, okay, kailangan po yung box mo is meron ka din pong label. But this um, label po, ito pong label na to, ito pong may... Uh, nasa box na label is ito po yung ginagamit sa transport. So ang sinasabi kapag mag-transport ka ng chemicals, okay? So the chemical po itself may label at the same time yung packaging niya or the box should have a label din po. Okay? Another example po, ito po consumer product. So others po other countries pag consumer product wala. Pero pag tiningnan po, ang example ko po, ano ba yung nakita ko? Mga alcohols po, yung ginagamit natin, mabinibili po natin ng mga um, pang, uh, pang linis, pang sanitize, yung mga alcohols. Meron, kung makikita nyo po is meron po siyang GHS label. Okay, pati po yung mga Fabcon natin, kung mapapansin nyo po, ah, meron kasi akong na, ah, na, nagamit din na fab Fabcon na meron po siyang um, GHS label. Okay. So, paano nyo malam pag may GHS label? Actually, pag nakita nyo po itong pictogram, yung black, uh, black pictogram, white background, red diamond frame, GHS po. Yan po kasi yung mga GHS pictogram. Okay. Another example po, ito po yung combination ng GHS na meron din pong um, 
for transport. Ito pong dalawang pictogram, ito pong merong ano, skull, bones, ayan. Ito po ang mga pictogram for transport po. Ito po yung ginagamit. Okay? Then another example po, okay? Meron siyang label, then meron din siyang pictogram. Okay. But itong pictogram po, itong may flame na may tree, pang transport po yan. Tsaka kung titingnan nyo po yung sukat niya, medyo malaki po yun. Malaki. Para po makita kung ano yung hazard niya. Kasi po yan is for transport na po. Okay? Yan. <clears throat> Then we have the GHS safety data sheet. So, um, ang inadapt po sa GHS is the 16 sections of safety data sheet. Okay, so before this po GHS SDS, before po ang sinusunod is the ISO SDS. So anong pagkakaiba niya? Sa ISO po, baliktad lang yung number 2 and 3. So IS, sa ISO SDS, number 2 yung composition, number 3 yung hazard identification. But from the series of meetings, um, subcommittee meetings, so nag-agree na po na ang susundin um, yun sa ISO po, Umokay na din na ang susundin natin is yun sa GHS SDS formatted. Hazard identification number two, three composition of information on ingredients. Composition and information on ingredients. So kung titingnan nyo po, 1 to 16, kaya ko po siya ninumberan kasi po yan na po yung pagkakasunod-sunod. Okay, section 1, the identification section 2. So yan po yung sunod-sunod. Uh, base po doon sa inadapt natin na GHS safety data sheet. Okay po? Okay? So ito po, by the way po, yung mga labels na pinakita ko kanina, sample labels, nandun po yun sa GHS uh, 8 revised edition. Okay? <clears throat> so yung nilalaman po nitong GHS, nandun din po to sa, ano, sa purple book. Okay? So the GHS implementation, so the UN... Um, experts on transport of dangerous goods, okay? Sila po yung naglilid sa development of the criteria for physical hazards in cooperation with the ILO. Okay. Organization of Economic Cooperation and Development, OECD, in charge po siya sa development ng health and environmental classification criteria including mixtures or preparations. Okay. Yun naman pong uh, sa hazard communication, the labels, safety data sheet, Si ILO po ang naglili dyan, International Labor, Labor Organization. Okay. So, hmm. new ECOSOC GHS structure. So, the, the United Nations Economic and Social Council po. Okay. So, meron po siyang committee of expert on the transport of dangerous goods and, sub, and uh, GHS. So, dalawa pong subcommittee yan. Meron tayong subcommittee of experts on TDG, Subcommittee of Experts on GHS. So, um, Transport of Dangerous Goods and GHS. Okay. So, ano po ang, ang ginagawa ng, uh, ng UNSCEGH, United Nations Subcommittee Experts on GHS. Okay. So, sila po yung custodian of GHS. So, sila po ang nagbibigay ng uh, direction, sila nagmamanage kung ano yung dapat gawin. Okay, so ito po, um, nagbibigay sila ng mga instruction regarding po dito sa harmonization ng, uh, ng GHS. Okay, so ina-ensure nila na ang GHS system is up to date. So kung titinan po, kaya nga po ang mga, purp ang GHS purple book po natin is ina-update kasi talaga pong merong mga pagbabago. Okay, promote understanding and the use of GHS. Make GHS available for worldwide use and application. As much as possible po, as possible po, yan po sana yung aim ni GHS. Maharmonize at mag-adapt po yung worldwide. Okay. Guidance on the interpretation and, and use of technical criteria to support consistency of application. So kailangan po kasi po um, uh, every year po may meeting po yan. Okay, meron po tayong mga representatives na umaaten po ng meeting para po um, ma-check or ma-inform ma tayo sa mga changes or sa mga uh, ano pa po yung mga updates sa GHS. Okay. 
the National GHS Implementation Committee. So ang naglilid po niyan sa Pilipinas is the Board of Investment or the BOI. So um, ito pong si BOI, sila po yung, um, ano to? Ah, sila yung in charge sa comprehensibility testing. Okay? So ito po yung mga information about the GHS. Sila po ang lead dyan kung ano na yung dapat gawin. Ah, legislation, technical training. So nagko-conduct po, may mga trainings po on GHS. Okay. Then awareness training or yung mga updates. Ayan. So si BOI po ang bahala dyan. Okay. Then under the BOI po, merong mga um, subcommittees po. Okay. For the agriculture, so we have po the Fertilizer and Pesticide Authority or the FPA. Pagdating po sa industrial workplace, we have the OSHC, EMB. Okay. For transport, the Department of Transportation and Communication, Consumer Products, Bureau of Product Standards, and DTI. Okay. Ito po yung Philippine Implementation Committee. So, nahahati po siya. Katulad nung diniscuss ko kanina, industrial workplace, agriculture, consumer, transport. So, meron po tayong government sector, industry sector, civil society. So, for the government sector, industrial workplaces po, si OSH si po, DOLE. Okay? For the agriculture, FPA, consumer, BPS, DOT, uh, DOTC, sa transport, transportation, Sa industry naman po, okay, sa industrial workplaces, okay, ang representative po is coming from the SPIC. Samahan sa Pilipinas na mga industriyang kimika. SPIC po yan. For agriculture, we have the Crop Life Philippines Inc. Uh, for consumer, Philippine Association of Chemical Suppliers Inc. or the PACSI. Transportation, Philippine International Sea Freight Forwarders Association, PISPA. For the civil society, for industrial workplaces po, Trade Union Congress of the Philippines, Agriculture National Congress Union in the Sugar Industry of the Philippines, National Federation of Women's Club, Philippine Seafarers Union. So yan po ang uh, mga subcommittee sa Pilipinas regarding GHS. But, okay, so hindi lang naman po sila ang kasama. So the National GHS Implementation Committee, so BOI, Coordinating Agency and Chair of All Sectoral Committees. So meron pa pong mga representatives from the government. Meron pong 26 agencies from the government, four associations, industry, five public interest and labor organizations. So kung titingnan po natin, marami pong uh, dito, maraming nag uh, marami pong kasama nung ginagawa po itong uh, nung ina-adapt ina natin tong si GHS so may mga series of meetings po hindi lang po isa ang nagde-decide diyan so marami pong um, members ng technical working group okay so um, up to now po continuous pa rin naman po ang mga meetings at TWG okay lalo na po sa mga updates sa GHS then continuous pa rin po may mga trainings pa rin pong kinokonduct Okay, na nag, um, ang nag uh, ayos po nito is the BOI. So every year naman po may mga uh, trainings na binibigay or mga refresher course on GHS. Okay, so yun pong diniscuss ko is yun po yung history bakit meron tayong GHS, bakit um, nag-adapt nag si Pilipinas, uh, bakit pumayag tayo i-adapt yung GHS sa Pilipinas. So with that po, ano po ba yung concern natin? Ang concern natin is the safety and health of the workers. Yan. Ngayon po, si Dole po, okay? So meron pong ginawa si Dole. So the Department Order Number 136 dash 14, so 2014 pa po ito. Ito po yung guidelines for the implementation of GHS in the chemical safety program in the workplace. Okay. So anong nilalaman nitong DO uh, 136-14? So complete copy po nito is nasa um, uh, OSHC website po. Mada-download po natin siya. So ito pong DO 136-14. Okay. Drafted by the Bureau of Working Condition 
and Occupational Safety and Health Center to amend Rule 1090. So Rule 1090 po of the Occupational Safety and Health Standards or the, o or the OSHS and to serve as <clears throat> implementing rules and regulations or the IRR to implement the provisions of GHS in the industrial workplace sector. Okay, so in amend yun yung Rule 1090. Ano po ba nilalaman ng Rule 1090 ng standards ng OSHS? So ito po yun uh, about hazardous materials. Okay, but for now po, ongoing din po yung um, sa amendment po ng OSHS. Ongoing po, may mga series of uh, TWG meetings po. But ito po kasi po, dito sa, kung makikita po natin sa Rule 1090, um, nandyan po kasi yung mga pictograms na kapasok dyan. But the pictogram po doon is hindi pa kasi siya naka-GHS. Okay. So may parang ano lang siya, parang picture lang siya na nasa um, square na shape. So yun po yung mga pictograms, hazard, uh, hazard symbols po na nandoon sa Rule 1090. But um, dito po sa uh, GHS, so igagamitin po natin para mas madali rin po tayong uh, mas madali natin maintindihan or mas madali tayong maka-adapt. So gagamitin po natin yung mga G, yung GHS formatted labels, pictograms and safety data sheet. Okay. So uh, bago po ito na approve. So meron pong four consultation meetings with partners. Okay? stakeholders, industries, associations, union, and other government offices were conducted. So, hindi po isa lang ang nag-decide nito. Kaya po nagkaroon ng series of consultation meetings. Okay. So, the legal authority for pursuant to the provisions of Articles 162 and 165, Book 4, Titles 1 and 2 of Labor Code of the Philippines and its IRR, the OSH standards, okay, um, the joint, meron din po kasi lumabas na joint DTI, DENR, DA, DOF, DOH, DILG, DOLE, DOTC, Administrative Order Series of 2009, otherwise known as the Adoption and Implementation of the GHS Classification and Labeling of Chemicals. So, ito po, um, ang ginawa po itong guidelines na to, okay, Para po mag-comply mag -comply ang mga companies dito sa GHS sa, uh, GHS sa kanilang mga workplaces. Okay. Okay. Ano po ang coverage nitong DO136-14? <clears throat> the guidelines shall apply to all workplaces engaged in the manufacture, use, storage of industrial chemicals in the private se sector, including their supply chain. So all workplaces po na gumagamit ng chemicals, manufacturing, covered po nitong DO136-14. Okay. Okay. Ano po ang objective nito? The guideline aims to protect the workers and properties from the hazards of chemicals. Okay. To prevent and reduce the incidence of chemically induced accidents, injuries, illnesses and death resulting in the use of chemicals at work. So kung titingnan po natin, anong concern natin? Protection ng mga workers sa mga hazards coming from the chemicals. So para ma-prevent natin yung incidents, accidents, injuries, illnesses na manggagaling resulting from the use of the chemicals. Okay. Definition of terms, hindi ko na po nilagay kasi marami pong mga terms na dapat i-define. So may mga terminologies po na naka-indicate dito sa DO136-14 such as chemical substance, container, hazard statement, precautionary statement, naka-define po dyan sa section 3 ng DO. Okay. Ay. <clears throat> Employers, so... Sa section 4 po, nandiyan po yung roles and responsibilities. So meron pong responsibilities si employer, may responsibilities si employees, at may responsibility din po ang safety and health committee. Okay. So ano responsibility ng employer? Kailangan ma-ensure niya yung development, implementation, and monitoring of the workplace policy and program. Ano tong policy and program na to? Policy and program 
policy and program on the safe use of chemicals, okay, which shall be disseminated. Kailangan po ito ipapaalam, i-inform sa mga workers kung ano yung programa, ano yung polisiya about chemical safety. Okay. Lalo na po sa mga um, heavy users ng mga chemicals. So kapag kayo gumagamit ng chemicals, kahit po isang chemical lang yan, kailangan meron ka pong programa sa chemical safety. Okay? Ensure that all chemicals are properly labeled and accurate SGS are provided. So ito po, kailangan merong proper label. Diba? Pag bumili po tayo ng chemicals, ano yung una natin hinahanap? Yung kanyang label. So kailangan po, properly labeled, nakadikit sa container, hindi po pwedeng ang label is pag, uh, pag sinupply sa inyo is walang label ang chemicals, hindi po pwede yon. Kailangan po ma-assure natin na accurate yung label at the same time, yung kanya pong ibibigay na safety data sheet ay kompleto or um, we can check po or we can um, oblige yung ating mga suppliers na magbigay po ng GHS formatted safety data sheet. Okay? Provide the necessary control measures including the appropriate PPE. So kailangan po kung ano yung hazard mo, kung ano yung chemical mo, tama yung iyong PPE. Kapag ang hazard mo is solvent, kailangan po ang iyong uh, respirator is appropriate po. Kailangan um, respirators for organic vapors. Okay. Provide appropriate information, education, and training on the safety of chemicals and GHS to workers. So, kailangan po na train, lalo na po yung mga chemical users. Kapag sa iyong workplace meron kang chemicals, kailangan na train po kayo. Okay, paano mo lalaman anong dapat mong gawin? So, magbabase din po yan sa GHS safety data sheet. If you want to know all the information about the chemical, punta ka po sa kanyang safety data sheet. Okay. Establish and implement chemical emergency response plan to mitigate accidental exposure, fire or explosion. So ano pong kasama dito sa plano na to? Yung pong pag-provide ng mga PPEs, ano yung dapat gawin, mga firefighting equipment. Okay? Ano pa po? Uh, fire alarm, fire alarm in case na magkaroon ng um, ano to, natapon. Ano yun dapat mong gawin? Ano yun dapat na meron ka? Kailangan po, nandoon yun sa Chemical Emergency Response Plan. Okay. Ensure implementation of chemical safety program by the Occupational Safety and Health Officer. So ito po, kasama dyan yung pag-inspect po ng mga um, safety officers. Okay. Kailangan po, chinecheck nila yung workplace, chinecheck kung Uh, yung sa proper handling, storage, disposal ng mga chemicals. At kailangan po, binibigyan po ng training on chemical safety or nagbibigay sila ng refresher sa mga employees po or workers na users of the chemical. Okay. Okay. So, syempre, si, emplo si employer meron po siyang roles and responsibilities. At the same time po, syempre, kailangan si empleyado makikipag-cooperate din. Okay. So, ano po ang roles and responsibilities ng employees? So, syempre, ang unang-una is kailangan mag-comply si employees sa policy and programs on the safe use of chemicals. Okay? Take all reasonable steps to eliminate or minimize risk to themselves and to others from the use of chemicals at work. So, syempre, sa employees pa lang, kailangan um, manggagaling din sa'yo or ano yung tamang dapat mong gawin para ma-eliminate or ma-minimize mo yung exposure mo sa paggamit ng mga chemical. Okay. Observe proper use of all safeguards and safety devices. So, kaya po nandiyan yung mga safety guards na yan, safety devices. Okay. Kung meron siyang mga... Uh, kaya po nandiyan yung mga devices na yan is para po maprotektahan din tayo against sa exposure ng chemicals. Okay. Report immediately to their supervisor any situation which they believe could be a potential risk. Since ikaw ang gumagamit ng chemical, so halos kabisado mo na. Kapag nakita mo, let's say, ang isang chemical, nakita mo nung uh, ginagamit mo siya, color white siya, nagulat ka, nagulat ka, bakit? Ay, bakit ito naging 
parang nagkaroon ng um, change sa color. So you should report po yun kasi may, baka may possibility na magkaroon po ng effect yun, yung change of color ng chemical. So anything po na ma-observe mo na sa tingin mo is magpo-post ng risk, you should report po sa inyong immediate supervisor. Okay. Okay. The roles and responsibilities of the Safety and Health Committee. Ito po, magbabasi po tayo doon sa Rule 1043 of the OSHS. Okay. So, iti-check po natin doon sa Safety and Health Committee. Ano ba tong Safety and Health Committee? Okay. Sila po yung planning and policy making group in all matters pertaining to the safety and health. So, kaya po sa isang company, meron po tayong mga... Uh, meron tayong dapat safety and health committee. Okay, so may mga members po yan, secretary, okay, sino po yung head. So kailangan po meron tayong safety and health committee. Then uh, from that committee po, dyan na natin aayusin. Kasi katulad to, if you are a user of chemical, kailangan meron kang um, members po regarding dito sa chemical safety. Okay. The safety and health committee shall plan and develop accident prevention program. Okay. Direct accident prevention efforts in accordance with the safety program, safety performance, and government regulation. So itong safety and health committee may, uh, may members po ito na kailangan po um, coming from the different uh, ano po yan? Uh, ano tawag dito? Uh, different work areas or um, kasi po if meron sa chemical, meron sa fire, so makikita po natin yan sa um, sa OSHS. Okay. Conduct safety meetings at least once a month. Bakit po? Di po po ba pag nagsasubmit tayo ng report sa DOLE, sinasama natin yung ano, uh, minutes of the meeting. Okay. Kapag nag-conduct ang safety and health committee ng meeting, so nagre-report or sinasubmit po natin sa DOLE yung minutes of the meeting. Okay. Review reports of inspection, accident investigation, and program implementation. Okay, just in case po, meron tayong ginawang inspection or may na-accidente regarding sa um, because of the chemicals. Okay, so kailangan po nagsa, uh, gumagawa tayo ng report and nire-report po natin to sa Safety and Health Committee. Okay, submit reports to the manager on its meeting and activities. Okay, kailangan po kasi documented dito. Okay. Provide necessary assistance to government inspecting authorities. So, um, sa si Safety and Health Committee po, kailangan um, ready siya just in case na may dumating po na from government, kailangan i-assist po niya sa, sa inspection itong mga government agencies. Okay? And uh, lalo na po doon sa OSHS uh, enforcement. Okay? Kailangan po i-assist natin ng Safety and Health Committee. Okay. Initiates and supervises training for employees. So the Safety and Health Committee, kailangan po, meron siyang nakaproject na mga trainings okay, para sa kanilang mga employees, lalo na po yun sa chemical users. Okay. Develops and maintains a disaster contingency plan. So ito po yung about emergency, pag-handle ng mga disaster. Kailangan po meron, uh, merong mga plano just in case po magkaroon ng problema or magkaroon ng disaster, okay? kailangan po meron kang plan. Okay? Industrial chemicals shall be classified according to the following. So, ito po, okay? so, katulad po nang diniscuss ko kanina, the GHS hazard classification, the chemicals may be classified according to the physical hazard, health hazards, and environmental hazards. Okay? So tatlo lang po yan. Pag nakita natin yung um, labels or the safety data sheet, makikita natin sa hazard classification kung ang isang chemical ay meron siyang physical hazard, meron siyang health hazard, meron siyang environmental hazard. Okay. Yan. So pagdating po sa hazard classification, <clears throat> on the physical hazard, so we have um, explosive chemicals. Okay, flammable, flammable gases, flammable aerosols, oxidizing gases, gases under pressure, 
flammable liquid, solid, self-reactive substances, pyrophoric liquids, pyrofo, ah, na ulit. Self-heating substances, substances which in contact with water emit flammable gases, oxidizing liquid, oxidizing solids, organic peroxide, corrosive to metals, desensitized explosive, and chemicals under pressure. So ito pong uh, physical, uh, when the, kapag ang chemical, klinasify mo according to physical hazards, ito po yung lalabas. So ang sinasabi ni JHS, lahat ng hazard nitong chemical na to dapat inilalagay doon sa safety data sheet or um, sa labels. Kung ang chemical mo is explosive, kailangan ilagay mo yon. Kung ang chemical mo is corrosive to metal, then at the same time, um, let's say, um, carcinogen siya, ilalagay mo rin siya. Lahat po ng physical hazards in black, in black colored na uh, font, yan po is base doon sa um, GHS 4th Revised Edition ng Purple Book. Kasi po, ito pong DO 136-14, nagbase pa po ito doon sa at uh, fourth revised edition ng Purple Book. Okay. So sa ngayon po, sa eighth revised edition po, okay, ito pong naka-violet na font, desensitized explosive and chemicals under pressure, ito po yung dinagdag na. So bago na po ito, nandoon na po ito sa eight revised edition ng Purple Book. So, inilagay ko na po. Nilagay ko po siya in violet kasi baka pag tinignan niyo po yung DO136, wala pa po itong naka-violet. So, ito po kasi nasa 8 revised edition. But nandito po sa GHS, so i-adapt is the latest edition. Okay. So, yan lang po yung nadagdag. Okay. For the health hazards po, okay, we have Acute toxicity, skin corrosion, skin irritation, eye effects, sensitization, germ cell mutagenicity, carcinogenicity, reproductive toxicity, single and repeated exposure, um, aspiration toxicity. So, yaan po yung sa health hazards. How about po yung environmental hazards? Okay. Sa environmental hazards po, nandiyan po yung hazardous to aquatic environment and hazardous to the ozone layer. Okay. Yan po yung categories ng chemicals, base naman po sa environmental hazards. Yan. So, eto na po yung GHS pictogram. Okay. So, yung pong naka-blue na font, okay, yung desensitized explosive, chemicals under pressure, yan po yung ka-explain ko lang na dinagdag sa 8 revised edition. Okay. <clears throat> so, pag nakakita tayo ng chemicals na merong apoy na merong O, Oxidizers po yan. Liquid, solid, gas. Pag nakakita po tayo ng flame, flammable po yan. Self-reactive, pyrophorics. So, ang GHS pictogram po is always um, a black picture, black, uh, ano tawag ito? Black picture, white background na nasa loob po ng red diamond frame. So, yan po yung um, nire-require ni GHS. Yan po yung uh, naka-harmonize po the GHS pictogram. Okay? So, pag nakita nyo na ganyan, oy, naka-GHS formatted na itong labels na to. Okay? So, for explosives, self-reactives, organic peroxide, meron pong uh, exploding bomb. So, tatanin nyo, ma'am, bakit po dalawa yung organic peroxide? Meron siya dito sa flame, meron din po siya dito sa explosive. Okay, so sa tingin nyo, ang ibig sabihin lang po niyan, merong um, category si organic peroxide na flame lang siya. May category naman si organic peroxide chemicals na exploding bomb. Ibig sabihin, mas hazardous yung, let's say, category 1 or 2 ng organic peroxide. Kasi exploding bomb <clears throat> against flame. Okay? <clears throat> Pag nakakita tayo nitong bungo, ito po, acute toxicity. Ito po na may parang test tube na merong uh, kamay. Okay? Corrosive to metals po. Serious eye damage, irritation to skin, corrosion, irritation. Uh, ito pong parang cylinder, gases under pressure or chemicals under pressure. Yan po yung ginamit ni GHS na pictogram for the specific hazard class. 
Okay? Ito pong yung may, uh, yung may tao na merong parang star. Okay? For carcinogen, um, for health hazard naman po ito. So pag nakakita ka naman ng puno na wala ng dahon, na meron isda, na parang namatay na isda, hazardous to the aquatic environment. Okay. So ito naman po yung exclamation mark for irritant chemicals po, skin sensitizers, and um, si hazardous to the ozone layer po, ito po yung kanyang pictogram. Okay. Hindi po siya nakalagay kasi dito sa ano, eh, hazardous to, uh, uh, dito sa parang sa environment. Dito po siya. Hazardous to the ozone layer. Okay, kung ang chemical mo is hazardous to the ozone layer, so gagamitin mong pictogram is itong exclamation mark. Okay. So ito pong GHS label elements, meron po siyang seven um, label elements. So ibig sabihin, ito po yung nilalaman ng isang GHS label. Meron siyang product identifier, kung ano po yung chemical na yon. Supplier identifier, sino po nag-supply, sino nag-manufacture. Chemical identity, anong pangalan ng chemical? The pictogram, so ano po yung pictogram? Ito po yung pinakita ko sa inyo na symbol na merong um, black picture, white background, red diamond frame. Mga pictograms po yan. The signal word po, ito pong signal word, siya po yung nag indicate ng level of severity of the hazard. Okay. For GHS use po, ang signal word po, dalawa lang po yan. Isang danger at isang warning. Wala ka nang makikita ang ibang signal word. Pag danger, siya po yung most, more severe na hazard. Pag warning, less severe na hazard lang po. Okay? The hazard statement naman po, okay? ang hazard statement, ito po yung naka-assign na mga hazard class. Kung ano pong category siya. Ito po yung nag, uh, nag-de-describe yung nature ng hazards ng prod, ng chemical products. Okay, so yun yung hazard. Let's say may apoy. So ang hazard statement nung merong apoy, so pwedeng um, flammable liquid. Ayan, yan po yung mga hazard statement. Okay? Um, precautionary statements. Ito, to, ito naman po yung nag, uh, nagbibigay, nagde-describe ng mga recommended control measures. Okay, kung anong dapat gawin. Okay, so... For GHS po, kapag tinignan po natin yung purple book, so the pictogram, signal words, and the hazard statements for a specific um, hazard classification, naka-harmonize po yan. Okay, na kay GHS po na purple book yan. Halimbawa, si um, flammable category 1, ang kanyang signal, ang kanyang pictogram, apoy, Okay, ang kanyang signal word is um, danger. Ang hazard statement niya, uh, let's say, <clears throat> flammable liquid. So, naka-harmonize po yan. Makikita natin yan doon sa annex ng purple book. So, naka-assign na po yan. So, yan pa lang po yung na-harmonize ni GHS. Okay, the precautionary statement, yan po plano na i-harmonize para po pag nagmanufacture ka ng chemicals at nakita mo na ay eto ano lang to um category 1 lang to ah, category 3 lang to so mababang category siya so hindi siya ganun ka hazardous pwede kang mag uh, pwede mong gawing reference yung purple book uh, para makita mo kung ano yung dapat mong gamitin na pictogram signal word and hazard statement so, tatlo lang po yan na naka-harmonize kay GHS. Okay. 16 sections of the safety data sheet. Identification, hazard identification, composition, first aid, firefighting measures, accidental release, handling and storage, exposure controls, and personal protection. Etong section 1 to 8 po, yan po dapat yung pagkakasunod-sunod based po kay GHS. Okay. Then we have the... Okay, section 9 to 16, physical and chemical properties, stability and reactivity, toxicological info, ecological info, disposal consideration, transport, regulatory information, and other information po na gusto nyong idagdag sa GHS. Diyan po yan ilalagay. So katulad po na sinabi ko, 
yan din po yung dapat yung pagkakasunod-sunod ng 16 sections ng safety data sheet. Okay. Ay. Section 5 pa rin, confidential business info. CBI claims should be limited to the names of chemicals and the concentration in mixture. No disclosure of any information shall be done. So di po ba pagka tinignan natin safety data sheet, minsan secret. Diba? Trade secret. Minsan nakalagay secret yung kanyang info. But in case of emergency na na-compromise na po yung health and safety ng workers, pwede po natin sabihin kung ano yung nilalaman. Kasi po, uh, kailangan ma-check din ng ating mga medical personnel anong gagawin in case of emergency of exposure dito po sa chemical na to. Okay, during emergency situations, kailangan na po natin sabihin anong, um, anong nilalaman niya para ma-check natin if um, anong kailangan natin gawin. Let's say natapon yung chemicals. Okay, kailangan malaman na po natin ano yung dapat na gawin para malinis natin tong chemicals or si worker na exposed, natapunan ng chemical sa kamay, kailangan po natin sabihin ano nang nilalaman nitong secret na chemical na to. Okay. Chemical safety program elements. Okay. Facility shall be maintained in an orderly and safe manner with appropriate control measures. Okay. Kailangan po, pag sinabi natin orderly and safe manner, kailangan po, okay, safe ang ating workers dito sa workplace natin. Control measures. Okay. Para sa protection ng ating manggagawa, we have the engineering admin control. Ano po yung mga engineering control? If we can enclose or segregate ang hazardous process using chemicals, okay? Partial and partial enclosed enclosure with um, appropriate local exhaust ventilation, okay? Sufficient general ventilation, okay? Um Administrative control, ito po yung rotation of workers, reduction of workers exposed, regular cleaning of the workplace, and the use of PPE. So pag sinabi po natin PPE, personal protective equipment. So itong PPE po, it should be, ang kailangan po natin na PPE is appropriate po. Okay, yung tamang PPE. Okay? Okay. Workers right to know. <clears throat> shall cover information on the workplace hazards, access to training and education on the chemical safety and SDS orientation. So kailangan po si worker, inform siya on the chemicals na ginagamit. So kailangan po, trinitrain siya um, if merong new chemical na iniintroduce, kailangan po, bigyan po ng training or yung tinatawag po natin na SDS orientation. So kung meron bagong chemical, nireplace mo itong um, hazardous chemical na to, ng less hazardous chemical, kailangan po i-orient din ang chemical users or yung mga um, workers na exposed dito sa chemical na to. <clears throat> okay. The worker has the right of refuse... F the workers has the right of refusal to work if an imminent danger situation exists in the workplace which may result to illness, injury, or death and until... The corrective actions to eliminate the danger is taken by employer. So, nandito po yun sa DO-136. Kapag pag merong imminent danger, pwede po mag-refuse si worker na magtrabaho. Until such time na naayos na po or na-eliminate na natin yung danger doon sa workplace. Okay? Storage requirement, chemicals are procured in consultation with the Safety and Health Committee. So, i-practice po natin ito. Uh, kapag bibili ng chemical, di po ba kailangan um, kailangan po, di ba, ng, kailangan ng tulong ng safety officer. Then, kailangan po i-check natin yung chemicals na bibilhin natin. Lalo na po pag merong bagong chemicals na padating. Okay? Well ventilated and in proper segregation of chemicals. Okay, so kailangan yung mga chemicals, dapat po tama yung kanyang storage. Okay, proper segregation, yung chemicals po na magkakagalit, kailangan po magkakalayo siya. 
Okay, hindi pwede pagsamayan. And well ventilated po, if need ng mga exhaust fans, maglagay po tayo. Chemical should be kept under strict control. Di po ba, pag nag, uh, yung chemical room natin, kailangan, ang nakakapasok lang po dyan is yung mga authorized na pumasok. Yung pong mga users ng chemicals. Okay? Stored chemicals should be examined periodically for replacement deterioration and container integrity. Okay, so yung mga stored chemicals, lalo na po yung mga chemicals na matagal nang nakastore. So kailangan po chinecheck natin yan. Kasi um, yung pong kahit po yung simpleng, let's say yung container mo, lata, nag, nagkalawang na yung takip or nagkalawang na yung container, we should check po. Kasi po, nagde-deteriorate or baka meron ng reaction yung chemical. At yung pong mga um, containers, eh, syempre po, kailangan tong container na to, kung ano yung original container niya, yun po, if natanggal si label, kailangan pong idikit natin or um, magawa tayo ng panibagong label. Basta po, nandoon yung label ng chemicals. Kasi may mga cases po na minsan siguro natatanggal yung dikit, so kailangan po ibalik natin yung mga labels. Quantities of chemicals should be kept to the minimum amount. Bakit po? Di po ba pag nag-purchase ng chemicals, yun tamang-tama lang. Aba, eh, wag po tayo mag-hoarding ng chemicals. Kasi po, delikado po. What if ang chemicals mo is flammable, magkaroon ng um, di inaasahang ano po, na magkasunog, if marami kang chemicals, mas malaki po ang magiging damage. Okay. Adequate security and limited access to chemical storage area. Okay, so hindi po lahat dapat pumasok. Maglagay na rin po tayo ng mga, um, ano to, mga safety signage sa mga um, chemical storage areas natin. Periodic inventory shall be conducted regularly para ma-check po natin kung may chemicals pang natitira, baka po may nakaligtaan tayo na chemical na matagal na palang nakastore. Proper labeling in accordance with the GHS must be observed at all times. So, ang proper labeling, since meron po tayong batas, meron po tayong department order, the 136-14. So, um, as much as possible po, yung ating mga chemicals na pinipurchase, um, hingi po tayo ng uh, GHS formatted na safety data sheet at the same time po, you can uh, tell your suppliers po na uh, mag-adapt po dito sa GHS. Okay. Okay. Waste management. Pagdating naman po sa waste management, the disposal of toxic substances shall be in accordance with the Title 3 on hazardous waste management. So pagdating sa waste management po, okay, sa DENR po, doon po tayo magbe-base. Okay. Information and training. Workers working with industrial chemicals shall attend chemical safety training. Kasi po dyan sa chemical safety training, discuss din po dyan yung GHS, hazard communication, the methods of storage, transport, and waste disposal of chemical, as well as emergency and first aid measures. So discuss po yan sa chemical safety kasi ang concern talaga dyan is the safe use of the chemicals. Okay. So, Kasama din po dyan yung kailangan po magkaroon ng retraining on the latest re revision of the GHS Purple Book. Kasi po baka mamaya itong chemical na ginagamit ninyo, okay, so nakalagay siya dati before flammable siya, category 4 lang. So medyo less hazardous yun. But uh, nung mag-update, okay, so naging category 1 na pala siya. Siguro, based doon sa kanilang pag-aaral, sa research, uh, pinalitan nila. So, shinif nila sa category 1. So, kailangan po, i-check natin itong mga chemicals na ginagamit natin. Okay? And kailangan po retraining or refresher course po. Okay? Kasi minsan, di ba, um, matagal ko nang ginagamit yan. Masyado na tayong nagiging kampante. Okay? PPE shall adhere to the provisions of Rule 1080 of the OSHS. Nandun po yan sa, sa OSHS natin. So every employer shall at his own expense furnish his workers with PPE whenever necessary. So si employer magbibigay ng PPEs okay, sa kanyang mga workers. Okay? 
wala pong bayad. So, kailangan po magbigay si employer. At lagi po natin tatandaan, appropriate personal protect, pro, protective equipment. Okay? WEM, Work Environment Monitoring. Okay? So, shall adhere to the provisions of Rule 1070 of the OSHS. Ano tong WEM na to? Okay. So, nakalagay dyan sa Rule 1070, kailangan si employer mag-exert siya ng effort para ma-maintain at ma-control ang work environment niya para maging safe, healthy, and comfortable ang kanyang uh, workplace okay? para sa safety and health ng workers. Okay. So, ano ba itong tinatawag na WEM? Work Environment Monitoring. It shall mean something and analysis carried out in respect of the atmospheric working environment and other fundamental elements of working environment for the purpose of determining actual conditions therein. So, ibig sabihin, pag sinabi natin, Wem, if we are using, let's say, hydrochloric acid, so we have to check yung exposure near workers sa hydrochloric acid. How will you check yung kanyang exposure? So, we have to check the ambient concentration of hydrochloric acid. How will you do that? So, you should conduct WEM. So, kailangan po mag-conduct ng WEM to check yung concentration nitong mga chemicals sa workplace. Okay. So, yan pong si WEM. The OSHC conducts WEM. So, and, um, and meron pong um, base po doon sa DO 160-16. So, meron pong department order si Dole. Okay. Ah, uh, ito po yung sa guidelines sa accreditation of consulting organization to provide WEM services. So sa DO 160-16, so nandoon po na kailangan magpapa-conduct po ng WEM ang isang company sa accredited ni Dole, sa Dole accredited WEM providers. So si WEM providers po, sila po um ang pwedeng mag-conduct sa inyo ng WEM, okay? Para po pag-chinek ng mga DOLE labor inspectors, mag-comply po kayo sa Rule 1070. Kailangan po accredited po. Okay? So may list po 'yan sa website po ng OSHC, nandun po ang list ng mga accredited WEM providers. Okay? Occupational Health and Medical Surveillance, okay, shall comply to the provisions of the Rule 1960. So, nandun din po yan sa OSHS. So, ang nasusulat po, every employer shall establish in his place of employment occupational health services in accordance with the regulations and guidelines provided. So, it shall be free of charge po. So, uh, dyan po, uh, yun medical records po ng mga employees confidential po yan. Okay. So ano pong uh, kasama diyan sa occupational health and medical surveillance? Okay. So nandiyan po uh, nasusulat po diyan sa rule 1960 yung workers health surveillance, um yun pong sa emergency and first aid treatment, duties ng OH physician, nurse, dentist, first aider, tsaka po yung mga OH programs and pong yung mga exams such as um health, physical, pre-employment exam. So, nandun po yan sa Rule 1960. Okay. Ay, nagpas na sa time. Okay, konti na lang po. <laughs> emergency preparedness and response. So, kailangan po merong written emergency procedure na posted. Actually, hinahanap po talaga yan din ni Dole. Okay, appropriate and adequate emergency equipment. Ano pong example nito? Yung pong ating mga uh, fire extinguisher, Okay, yung um, emergency eye wash, shower, well-trained emergency response team. Ito po. So, pag sinabi po natin emergency response team, so, <clears throat> lagi po namin nilalagay well-trained. Kasi po, kailangan bago ka mag-respond sa emergencies, nakapag-attend ka po ng training. Okay? <clears throat> Monitoring procedure, the Bureau of Working Conditions through the Dole Regional Offices shall monitor compliance to the guidelines, pertinent provisions of the OSH standards and other related laws and policies. So, ito pong compliance ng isang kumpanya sa DO 136-14. Okay? <clears throat> Ang nagmo-monitor po niyan, 
is the Dole Regional Office, the Dole Inspectors of the BU, through uh, the BWC through the Dole Regional Office, yung pong kanilang Madole Labor Inspectors. Sila po ang nag-check-check, nag-check-check if nakakomply ang isang company sa DO 136-14. So they will check po yung iyong chemical safety program na ang nilalaman is yung pong diniscuss ko before. And kung naka at sinecheck din po kung yung inyong um yung kung merong data, safety data sheet SDS or end labels yung inyong mga chemicals. Okay. All old orders and issuances contrary to or inconsistent with the provisions of this order are hereby modified or repealed accordingly. Okay? Penalties, all violations shall be subject to applicable penalties provided for in Labor Code as amended including other laws. So, eto po, yung penalty, saan po natin na makikita? Di po ba merong bagong labas yung um, RA 11058? Okay, nandun po yun sa IRR, sa DO 198. So, nandun po yung penalty, provisions of information on hazards and risk. So, nandun po, tingnan natin penalty, absence of safety data sheet. May nakalagay po doon. And other penalties po. And other um, yung pong provisions or kung, um, related po dito sa DO, uh, tingnan na lang po natin doon. Okay. Uh, nilagay ko lang po ito, ha, transitory provision. So, all establishments shall comply with this DO one year upon its effectivity. So, since 20 uh, July, at uh, uh, July 2014 po, ginawa itong DO. Okay? So, after a year, July 29, 2015, kailangan po mag-comply ang mga companies dito po sa DO na 136-14. Effectivity is 15 days after publication. Okay. So, yan po yung kabuuan ng department order uh, 136-14. Okay po. Ito po yung uh, GHS Purple Book. Okay. So, nagbigay po ako ng link para makuha natin yung 8th revised edition. Tama. 8th revised edition ng Purple Book. Okay. So, um, nadadownload naman po yan if you want po yung mas thorough na explanation on the different... Um, um, hazard classification, labels and safety data sheet, nandito po sa purple book. Okay? Yan. Tandaan po natin, ligtas ang maingat. Marami pong salamat sa pakikinig. Miss Chaal. Yan na. Thank you, Ma'am Chris, uh, uh, no, sa very detailed na discussion ng GHS and Dolly O136-2. 14. Um, so let's proceed uh, with our Q&A or open mm -hmm. forum. Po. Madami po tayong uh, oh, no. <laughs> mga questions. Marami po. pa, sige. <laughs> Sabutin tayo ng hapon, no? <laughs> Let me read for the first question po, ma'am, please. Uh, from Mr. Rene Ibasco, isa po siya sa mga nanonood sa ating Facebook live po. Tinatanong niya po kung kailan po dapat ina-update ang SDS ng isang manufacturer kung every five years po ba? Yes, opo. Ang sinasabi po kay ni GHS, at least five years po ina-update siya. Okay? Kasi po, di ba may mga cases na if meron pong pagbabago, let's say the next year may pagbabago, kailangan na po natin i-update. Pero ang pinakaano po at least every five years po ina-update siya. Uh, next question po from uh, Teza po from Mr. Melencio Silo Are we allowing entry in the country chemicals which are not GSH compliant? Um, yun po kasing mga chemicals na pumapasok based po sa ano ha sa mga companies na napupunta namin may mga chemicals pa rin po na hindi pa naka GHS uh, formatted. So, if ang country is hindi 
hindi kasama sa nag-adapt sa JHS, ang kanilang safety data sheet or labels is hindi po naka uh, naka-formatted. So we can uh, tell po yung ating mga suppliers or lalo na po yung mga countries na naka-adapt na dito na uh, dapat po i-amend na po nila o i-revise po nila yung kanilang uh, safety data sheet and labels then i-adapt na po yung GHS. So other companies kasi ganyan ang ginagawa. Parang kapag kukuha kami ng chemicals pero since meron ng DO 136-14, kailangan uh, mag uh, mag adapt tayo dito. So parang advisable ma'am na yes. Yes, required na tayo. Sa yes po. Um, next question po from a uh, joyful worker, Mr. Francis Sora. Clarification in applying GHS sa uh, pharma, I think siguro ma mga pharma mm -hmm. uh, pharmacists mm -hmm. ito. Ang labels po sa lang po ba sa boxes at hindi na sa mga bote ng gamot? I think na-discuss na ito kanina. Ma. Yes po, kasi uh, pag ang inaano kasi ng DO natin, DO 136-14 natin, is yun sa workplace. So, doon sa manufacturing, doon sa uh, process, doon sa mismong pag-manufacture, di ba meron kang mga raw materials. So, pagdating nitong raw materials na to, kailangan po, meron po siyang labels at the same time po, meron pa rin siyang safety data sheet. So, ang hindi lang cover di GHS, yun sa intentional intake. Okay, katulad po yung mga gamot na iniinom. Yan. So, yung kanyang label, kahit hindi na, uh, wala, hindi po, kahit hindi na siya naka-GHS label. Okay. Sa mga workplaces, kailangan po. Um, another question po, uh, galing sa isang viewer natin from Facebook po, Mr. Edwin Mira Felix. Is it mandatory to chemical manufacturers to post the SDS in their website, what is the frequency of SDS review? Um, hmm. Last question niya po, balipat lo po yung question. What is the hmm. timeline for the chemical manufacturers to implement it, including transportation? Hmm. Yun pong ano, sa website, kasi po di ba may mga chemicals, actually po yung mga single or pure chemicals, let's say isopropyl alcohol, toluene, So kapag nakita kasi natin, pag ginugel natin yung sinerge, may makikita tayo. Okay, so um, nasa inyo po if ilalagay ninyo sa inyong website. Kasi po, yun pong didiscuss ko rin yung CBI or yung Confidential Business Information. Di po ba? Kaya meron kasing mga cases na um, ano to, confidential yung chemicals or yung... Uh, yung nilalaman niya. But um, yun kasing nilalaman itong safety data sheet, ang importante po doon is known sa mga users. Okay, sa manufacturers yung gumagamit po, kailangan alam po nila kung ano nilalaman nito in case of emergencies. Then sa review po, as much as possible nga yan, um, regular review, nasa, nasa inyo po yung but yun updating kasi ni SDS at least five years, ina-update yan. Okay, so review, I think, sa manufacturer, hindi ko sure ha, kung every year, as long as meron changes, ayun, nagre-review sila. Nasagot ko na ba yung tatlo? Sige. <laughs> yes, so, uh, next question po, um, from, hindi ko pa alam kung Miss or Mr. Sha, Chelyon Bohia. Um, there are many suppliers who cannot provide SDS. Where can we report them if they provide naman sinasabi sa mga buyers or customer na magdagdag ng amount sa babayaran? Ay, ano po, ang safety data sheet po is free po yan sa supplier. So, responsibility po, obligasyon ng mga supplier natin na magbigay po ng safety data sheet. Okay, so, kung uh, kasi po ang ang mga pumapasok na chemicals sa Pilipinas, nagsasubmit po sila ng mga uh, safety data sheets sa DENR. So si DENR kasi may sarili rin um, batas on GHS. But ito pong ano na to, GHS, hindi, wala po yung bayad. Kasama po nung chemicals na ipapurchase ninyo yung kanyang safety data sheet. 
ganun po ang ano nin ng SDS. Wala pong bayad 'yan. Ah. Uh, um next question po. Is there an implementing rule that ratifies uh UNESCO GHS? Ah. Uh, ano po 'yan eh? Uh, every year I'm not sure po ha kung every twice a year nagmi-meeting po yung mga members diyan. So in I'm not sure po. So kapag ka merong pagbabago, so ina-update na lang po ko sino yung uh, representative ng Pilipinas. Then iaano na lang po nila sa mga subcommittees. Um Uh, next question po, isa po natin siyang uh, OSH practitioner po. Mm -hmm. um, if we, uh, parang suggestion niya po, if we adopted GH, GHS and for strict regulatory compliance, can we implement the specific task risk assessment of chemicals or similar to COSH for the company, company's preliminary process for the safe use of the chemical in the workplace? Mm -hmm. Recommendation ba yan ni Sir? <laughs> Suggestion pa parang may quest pwede, question mark po. <laughs> Kahit hindi na yung question mark, sir, okay na yan. <laughs> uh, next question po. What will be the consequences if the supplier or manufacturer mm -hmm. cannot provide the standard SDS? Mm. Uh, ano po kasi yan eh. Uh, nasa... Uh, ano to, users po. So, siguro po sa part po ninyo, uh, parang i-oblige nyo po or i, ano to, i, i ano nyo sa kanila na kailangan mag-submit po sila nung uh, naka-formatted na GHS po na mga labels and safety data sheet. So, you can, uh, ano po yung ating DO, yung DO 136-14, pwede nyo pong i-ano sa kanila yan na kailangan sumunod po sa uh, dito sa ating DO. So, meron po kaming mga um, mga clients, mga company, uh, chemical users po na talagang kasama doon sa pag-purchase nila, yung uh, nilalagay na rin po nila kailangan uh, naka-GHS formatted po yung label and the safety data sheet. So pwede nyo pong gawin yon parang i-ano nyo po uh, during the purchase po, parang uh, i-ano nyo na sa kanila na kailangan naka-GHS formatted na siya. Uh, next question po from one of our Facebook uh, viewers din po. Is the NFPA 704 diamond rating affected by the GHS? Um, yung nun po kasi nag-meeting about dito po sa GHS na um yung ko ano ifa-follow na pictogram okay so kinonsider din po yan so parang uh, doon sa mga uh, yung mga binanggit kong mga labeling uh, yun sa Canada so lahat po yan parang pinag-usapan so na, kaya nag-arrive dito sa GHS But meron pa rin po kasing country na gumagamit pa rin itong NFPA na uh, labeling. Okay, but parang uh, uh, most po kasi uh, ginagamit na is the GHS. Yun. Pero yun po, basta kinonsider po yan nung, uh, nung ginagawa itong mga GHS labels na to. Next question po on uh, chemical disposal naman po. Mm -hmm. um, do we need to do we need to have a permit para i-dispose po and saan po kukuha ng permit? Oh, teka ma'am. Uh, sa disposal po yan, sa DENR, concern na po yan pagdating sa disposal. Okay. Uh, Uh, next question po. Um, sino po ang implementing committee for schools po? Ah, sa school. Ano? Kasi sa mga um, subcommittee, sa mga TWG, uh, ang alam ko nag-invite din from schools 
Uh, ah, parang hindi ko na ano. Meron sa mga TWG kasi, sa technical working group, may mga uh, before may uma-attend kasi from Akadim. So, uh, ngayon, siguro ma'am, i-check ko ha, kasi for now, etong sa schools kasi, parang uh, yung mga uh, chemical, uh, yung mga professors, kanya So, uma-attend, parang na uh, natututunan lang nila yung GHS from the trainings. But uh, not sure ako ha kung sino ang ano dito sa sa mga schools. But nai-invite naman sila eh. Sige, siguro si ma'am or si sir kung may tanong, siguro email na lang siya para ma-check ko. Ah, uh -huh. Sige pa. Yan. Uh, next question po from Meral ko, Mr. Aaron po. Mm -hmm. pa Paano po pag uh, trade secret, allowed po ba si vendor na itago yung composition ng product? Mm -hmm. Ayan po. Yung diniscuss ko po on CBI, confidential business information, in case po ng emergency na ang nakaano na po dyan is the safety and health of the workers, pwede na pong sabihin nung, uh, nung mismong manufacturer kung ano po yung nilalaman ng chemical. But Uh, hindi naman po niya sasabihin sa lahat ng tao. So doon lang po sa mga emergency responders or kung sino ang concern. Kasi po, health at safety na ng workers yung nakaano dyan eh. So kailangan niya na pong isabihin. Uh, next question, Ma'am Chris. Um, what is the standard labeling for the secondary containers of chemicals? Yan. So yun sa... Standard labeling po sa secondary containers, usually po, no, di ba, mga secondary containers, maliliit na containers lang. Okay. So, nasusulat po kay GHS, ang secondary containers po, dapat lagyan da pa rin po natin ng uh, labels. If we can uh, make po ng label na um, ni ang nilalaman niya is yung buong label elements, mas okay po. But yun po ay po pwede lang sa mga malalaking containers. But if sa mga maliliit na containers, so um, merong recommendation si GHS na kapag nag-label ka, pwedeng yung pictogram lang, uh, pictogram, the name of the, the chemical, plus ano yung um, hazard niya. Let's say, uh, flammable siya, pwedeng pictogram lang. But kung saan niya gagamitin itong secondary labels, pwede siyang mag-post malapit doon or kung saan nakatpatong, pwede niya doon i-post yung pinaka-primary label or pwede kang gumawa or kopyahin mo yung primary label. So not necessary doon sa secondary label kasi hindi naman talaga siya kakasya. So may ibang way si GHS na tinuro. So pwede doon sa individual workplaces mo i-post yung safety data sheet or the label. <clears throat> uh, next question po. Uh, mm -hmm. During checking po of chemical SDS and labels, may mga times po na may pic pictogram yung SDS. But mm -hmm. on the product label, they do not provide the pictogram. However, some of the label elements are available naman po. Okay lang po ba it ba to, to accept the label? Mm. Kasi po, kung ano yung pictograms na nasa label or kung ano yung information na nasa label, makikita mo yon sa safety data sheet. Okay. Sa case niya, parang wala sa label pero nandun sa safety data sheet. Parang ganon, di ba, Miss Cha? No. Kailangan po kung ano po yung kanyang hazard, um, ano to, hazard classification, dapat nandoon po yun sa label. Kung sasabihin, masyado kasing maliit yung, ano, yung container niya. Katulad po nung sinabi ko, may iba pong way. Pwede rin pong, uh, hindi ko na po kasi na example, pero nasa perp. Yung parang nakafold na papel, uh, nakafold siya sa sobrang liit ng container niya, nakafold siya, pero nakadikit pa rin po siya doon sa, ano, sa container. So marami pong ways na pwede. But kung ano yung hazard na nasa safety data sheet, kailangan nandoon po sa label. So in short po, yung buong label mo nandoon po yan sa safety data sheet. Okay. Po. 
um, in connection mm. to that, ma'am, meron mm. po ba tayong uh, standard size of placards or signages as per distance of the viewer? Ah, wala kasing naka-specify. Ang importante po dyan sa mga placards, sa mga labels is readable. Ang, in, ang importante po dyan is nakokonvey niya yung information na gustong ipakita nung, uh, nung chemical na yon. As long as nababasa po siya. Uh, next question po. Um, is there a way to access this CBI ahead of emergency scenario? Most of the suppliers and manufacturers do not disclose this just upon request. Oo nga eh. Kasi yan, yan nga yung, ano, yung problema natin. Kasi meron talagang trade secrets itong uh, mga supplier na to. So hindi natin din pwedeng i, ano to? ipilit. But Uh, ang sinasabi ni GHS, kapag in case of emergency, okay, in case of emergency, kailangan ready yung supplier or the manufacturer. Ano ang problema po dyan? Minsan, ang manufacturer mo is nasa ibang countries. So, sino lang ang contact mo rito? The supplier. Okay. So, as much as possible po, lalo na po yung mga chemicals sa talagang hazardous, kailangan meron din po tayong contact with the manufacturer through the supplier, through, the, through our local supplier po. Meron pa. Uh, meron <laughs> Parang pa. Meron pa. ako nababase. <laughs> oh. uh, next question lang, please. Ano pong standard GS, GHAS hmm. label sa chemicals pack in drums? Ayan, in drums. Okay. So, um, Iba't ibang countries po, meron na po silang um, ano to, label size. Depende po sa country, si Malaysia may nilabas. Okay. Um, pagdating po dito sa GHS Purple Book, wala po siyang specific. Eh. Pero ang sinasabi niya is, as long as readable, nababasa siya, at yung sinasabi po na kailangan makonvey niya yung information about the chemicals. So, Meron po akong nakita dito sa DENR. Actually, sa DENR to eh. Meron akong nakita sa DENR po. So, siguro po i-check na lang din po natin sa kanila po ito. Uh, depende po sa size ng container. So, meron po siyang ninote dito sa, sa container capacity na less than 1 liter. Wala po siyang size specification as long as readable. Sa transport po, Katulad nung tinatanong, yung sa transport po, kailangan po malaki po ang label niya. Parang, uh, parang ang tawag doon, yung, yung drum niya, kailangan proportion yung label mo doon sa drum. At ayon po dito sa uh, UNRTDG, yung po United Nations Recommendation on the Transport of Dangerous Goods, sila po ang uh, yung UNRTDG na mga uh, pictogram, yun po yung uh, ginagamit para sa transport ng chemicals. Yun po yung parang may, may pictogram tapos may number sa ilalim. Yun po yung mga UNRTDG na mga pictograms ginagamit sa transport. At ang nakasulat lang po kay GHS, yung pictogram, yung pinaka-picture, ang minimum lang po is 100 mm by 100 mm. Yung dimension nung pinaka pictogram but for the cases of malalaking container kailangan po proportionate po yung kanyang label at kung transport ang gagamitin po natin diyan is the UNRTDG na mga pictogram specifically for the transport po ng chemicals kasi inadapt po ni GHS yan eh yung sa UNRTDG na transport ng uh, transport pictograms Meron pa, may nabasa Meron natin pa. ako. Okay. Uh, next question po. Um, required po ba ang chemical certificate of analysis prior to procurement? Mm, based po sa aming mga experience, pwede po natin sila hingan. Actually, hinihingan po natin di ba, pag bumibili tayo ng chemicals. Uh, 
Next question po. Uh, who is responsible po for the implementation of uh, GHS? Is it the safety officer or uh, PCO? <laughs> Magbotohan na lang tayo, no? <laughs> Hindi po. Actually po, um, sa GHS, kasi po, di ba, si safety officer, katulad po nang diniscuss ko, di ba, kanina, uh, meron din siya, kasi siya sa safety and health ng workers. The safety officer, pwede po siyang uh, mag-implement yan at the same time si PCO. Okay, so kailangan din po si PCO, kasi po may sarili din po ang DENR, yung compliance nila to GHS. So, kung sino po mag-implement, parehas po sila. <laughs> Para wala na silang away, na sila nalang dalawa. Parehas po. <laughs> uh, next question naman, ma'am, regarding uh, DO136 po. Mm -hmm. um, do you have plans to revise daw po or mm -hmm. kung update daw po siya na ma-include na yung 8th edition ng uh, Purple? Ah. Kasi po, uh, actually, ang nakalagay po sa GHS na DO, DO136, um, ang nakalagay po kasi doon na mag a sa latest edition. Okay, so meron na kasi doon clause na kailangan sa latest edition. So, um, ang ginagawa po namin sa mga lectures namin, when we conduct the chemical safety training, okay, doon na po namin dinidiscuss yung mga... Um, ano to, yung mga changes or updates. So, kaya po kanina, nung diniscuss ko yung katulad sa pictograms, dinagdag ko na po yung desensitized uh, explosive. Yan, dinagdag ko na po siya. Pero, ano po, i, uh, ina, ay, a, ano na po namin yan kasi po, um, with the ongoing po na OSH, oh, ano to, OSHS, okay, uh, yung OSH standards po na amendment, Okay po, so inaano na rin po namin yan. Okay po, iaano na rin po namin, i-revise na rin po namin yan. Um, last two questions na lang po, ma'am. Dalawa na lang. <laughs> um, from Mr. Mark Gonzalez, as a product distributor, kanino po manggagaling yung GHA, GHS labels for transport use? Sa manufacturer or sa amin na distributor? Uh, kasi po... Yun kasing sa transport, yun pong manufacturer, kasi diba ang manufacturer, pag gumawa siya ng chemical, diba, so lalagyan niya ng GHS label. Okay. So papano niya itra-transport yun? Kailangan niya pa rin maglagay ng transport na mga label, pictogram. So doon pa lang po sa manufacturer, I think sa manufacturer pa lang po, kailangan lagyan niya na po ng... Ano, ng um, mga labels. Kasi paano mo siya itra-transport? And siguro po kung may uh, pagdating dito or kung may na-check po si distributor or meron gustong idagdag doon sa, uh, sa transport uh, document or sa transport label, pwede pong dagdagan yun ng, ano, ng mga distributor. Okay. Uh, Last question na po, Ma'am, please. <laughs> um, is it okay po? Uh, is it okay na same yung chemical pero iba, magkaibang manufacturer? Considered accepted po ba yun? Uh, kung sa paggamit nyo po, ha? Kasi same naman siya if you check po yun chemical abstract service registry number niya ng isang chemical. Bawat chemical po merong cast number eh. So kung... IPA yan, isopropyl alcohol, lahat yan parehas puro si, uh, isopropyl alcohol but depende po sa manufacturer. So nasa sa inyo po sa mga users kung okay lang sa inyo na gumamit ng iba kasi yung iba po kasi, other companies, bago po kasi mag-purchase, let's say sa ibang supplier, Katulad nung binanggit ni Sir kanina yung certificate of analysis, hinihingi po nila ano yon para po ma-check if itong uh, chemical na to is the same nung dati nilang ginagamit. Di po ba kapag bumili tayong chemical, hindi naman agad-agad papalitan ko to gamitin ko nga itong uh, bagong supplier, mas mura to But you have to check po. Kasama na po doon yung certificate of analysis and the, uh, yun complete copy po nung 
labels and the safety data sheet para po ma-check ninyo. Then you compare na lang po. Yan, totoo na yun. <laughs> okay. Madami pong questions pero um, ano po siya regarding WEM po? Yung Ay, ano? ayan. Opo, Ganito ma. Opo. Opo. Ganito po. <laughs> um, if may mga inquiries pa po, katulad po on GHS or yun pong, lalo na po yun doon sa WEM, siguro po you can ano, uh, email directly na lang po sa OSH. Yes. Then i- Yes, ano, mag-reply na, na lang po kami. Or you can call po para mas madali. Okay, yun po. Mm -hmm. And uh, magkakaroon din po tayo ng separate na webinar and sa web po. Ah. Kaya abangan po nyo yung mga mm -hmm. uh, kung anong araw po namin ipakandak yun para mm -hmm. po sa mga questions regarding ah, web po. Siguro yun na lang yung mga uh, questions. Mukhang wala nang time. Wala na po. Uh, directly na lang akong hanapin. <laughs> oh, okay. Maraming Thank salamat you. po pang sa Thank you. Thank you po sa inyo. Stay uh, safe po. Q&A po. Um, po. Uh, right. Na po to uh, end uh, our session for today. Let us welcome the OIC Deputy Executive Director of the OSHC, Engineer uh, Connie Santo Tomas. Maraming salamat siya. Magandang tanghali po sa, sa inyong lahat, uh, sa maraming participants po ng ating uh, mag-osh up tayo. No? So habang uh, uh, dumadami na, dumadami ng dumadami po ang ating mga uh, followers dito sa ating uh, uh, mag-osh up tayo. Okay, so first of all, maraming salamat Engineer Chris Pangindian for um, comprehensive discussion dito sa ating topic ngayong araw na to, no? Uh, GHS and the 136-14. So, dito sa presentation mo, uh, nabigyan natin ng, uh, nabigyan mo ng uh, uh, maliwanag, ano? O oh, napakaliwanag na uh, ang pagbibigay ng importansya sa ating sa GHS at sa chemical safety program. So in such a way na uh, kinakailangan talaga na mayroong single system of uh, classifying and communicating the hazardous properties of chemicals worldwide, di ba? At ito nga ano, uh, maiwasan natin yung mga barrier para sa uh, international trade. Okay? So also, the importance, yung, yung role and responsibilities ng employers, ng employees sa ating uh, workplace chemical safety program. Okay, so, yan po. Uh, yung adherence po natin dito sa ating mga programa, natural, mag, uh, it will lead to the reduction or elimination of accidents, illnesses, and even deaths. Uh, uh, due to mishandling, ano, alam po natin na maraming cases ng mishandling of chemicals at work. So isa lamang po yan sa mga topics na gusto namin uh, ipaalam sa inyo dito sa Occupational Safety and Health Center. At uh, we hope po no, na patuloy po kayong uh, susubaybay sa aming uh, uh, mag-wash up tayo. So sa inyo po lahat, uh, maraming maraming salamat po. Uh, sa pagdalo dito sa ating uh, webinar series. Mag-ingat po tayong lahat. Um, this ends our